Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. This is the second lecture in my short course on Poinsett topology. And in this video, I want to talk about basic topological properties, including limits and closure. Okay, so what do I mean by topological properties? So remember, in topological spaces, unlike in the theory of metric spaces, we don't have a notion of distance, okay? But there is still geometry involved. So perhaps the motivating question I want to have a look at here is, when you forget this notion of distance, what geometric properties remain just from the topology? Okay, so remember topological space, what data do you need to give that, uh, give a topological space? So firstly, you need a set, and then the geometry just comes by saying, uh, collection of open sets, okay? So giving a collection of open sets, which satisfies the axioms of a topological space, will give you the geometry that's encoded in the topology. And remember, that's supposed to capture the information uh, which respects continuity, okay? So of course, when you define a continuous function in calculus, you use the notion of limits. And that's how also in my first video, I motivated the definition of a topological space. So let's see how the notion of limits can be cast in any topological space. So let x be a topological space, like this one here in blue, and let's suppose we have a sequence of elements inside here, x1, x2, x3, and all the way down, and we want to have the notion that it tends to some limit little x like that. Okay, so what does it mean? The limit of xn as n goes to infinity is equal to this x inside big X. Okay, so what's it mean? Well, before it used to be you pick any epsilon, okay, and then eventually you get within epsilon here, okay, so instead of looking at epsilon balls around here, you talk about open neighborhoods, okay. So all I want to do is replace the epsilon with, for each open neighborhood, v of x. So let's take an open neighborhood v of x, okay, like that one there. What do you want to happen? You want to say that you're eventually inside here. So that means that for some large enough positive integer big N, xn will be inside this open neighborhood for all little n bigger than or equal to that big N. Okay, so this is just the same as your usual definition, except for we've replaced the epsilon ball around this x with an arbitrary open neighborhood. Okay, so it's nice that we can recover the definition of a limit, okay, in an arbitrary topological space. And the only thing that's a bit different here is the following remark, and that is, in this definition, of course, there's no reason why this x, which uh, satisfies such a condition, need be unique. And in general, in fact, that's not necessarily the case. So perhaps it's better to say that this little x is just a limit of this sequence xn here. Okay. So we're going to generalize this notion a little bit more. And it turns out for topological spaces, unlike for metric spaces, actually, you need more general notions than just limits of sequences. You need limits of nets, okay? So I'm not going to talk about that, but I'm going to talk about a slightly related concept here, okay? So suppose we have that same uh, topological space, big X here, and now we have some subset S, okay? So it could be just a sequence, a countable sequence like this, but it could be an uncountably, uh, an uncountable subset as well, uncountably infinite, okay? So it's just some set like like this s, okay? And what we're going to say is, uh, we're going to uh, say a little point x inside big X, so let's just pick one here, for example, like that one there. We're going to say it's arbitrarily close to this set s if the following condition holds, okay? For all open neighborhoods big V of x, okay, so let's just pick some uh, open neighborhood like this. You want that open neighborhood v to actually intersect this s. Okay, so in other words, the intersection of v with this s is non empty. Or another way to say that is that that v is not in the complement of s, it's not outside that s. Okay, so v is not contained inside the complement of s. Okay, so that's an equivalent way of saying it. Okay, so in such a situation, as you can see, this is an example of a point which is arbitrarily close to this s. I've, I've drawn it. Okay. And so here, uh, you've seen this picture, x is indeed arbitrarily close to the set s. And this gives you a definition uh, which kind of generalizes this one here, except for this s can be uncountably infinite and it's just a subset. 
Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is the notion of a closed set. So you certainly would have seen the notion of a closed interval in single variable calculus and maybe in your complex analysis courses you would have seen more generally what a closed set is. And I want to show you that this is also a topological notion, so something that you can define on any topological space. Okay, so suppose now Z is just some subset of a topological space X. Okay, I'm going to define what it means to be closed, that set. And you can define it using one of two equivalent conditions. Okay, so I've given them as A and B here. So the first one is quite uh, simple. It just says that the complement of that set is open. Okay, so since uh, topology is defined using open sets, okay, it's quite easy to check this in terms of the definition of the topology on X. That though doesn't tell you much about the geometry and what that kind of really means, okay. So the second one is a kind of a geometric characterization of what closed means, okay. So what does this, uh, what does it mean for this uh, set Z to be closed? Well let's suppose you pick any uh, element little z inside X which happens to be arbitrarily arbitrarily close to this big Z here. Then, in fact, this Z has to be inside that uh, big Z, okay, that subset, okay. So in other words, a closed set is one which contains all these Zs, all these points arbitrarily close to it, okay. So this is an example of set which isn't closed because it doesn't contain that X there, okay. So that's another reason or another way to think of the terminology closed. Why do we call it closed? Because it's closed undertaking all the points which are arbitrarily close to it. Okay, so these two conditions are equivalent. And before I at least prove for you why A implies B, a similar argument will show that B implies A, let me just uh, remark that uh, this notion of arbitrary close is not a standard notion in topology. I've used this uh, instead of the more usual notion of accumulation points just because it makes the treatment of this definition a little bit easier. Okay, so let's at least show why A implies B, okay, so that you get a sense for why these two conditions should be equivalent. Okay, so, so let's suppose that uh, you have Z complement is indeed open, then we need to show this holds, so we can show this implication holds by showing the uh, the Contrapositive. So let's suppose that Z is in the complement of Z. Okay, so Z is not inside uh, this big Z. Okay, so if it's not inside this big Z, then it must be in its complement, which is open. So this open set contains this little Z, so it's an open neighborhood of Z. Okay, so Z complement is an open neighborhood of Z. Like this V that I have here, you have some open neighborhood of that Z. But that open neighborhood of Z doesn't intersect the original Z, okay, because it's the complement. Okay, so Z intersects the complement, is the empty set. So, of course, this little Z isn't arbitrarily close to this big set. You've shown that if this doesn't hold, then this part here does not hold. Okay, and that's the, under the assumption of A. So that shows you that A implies B. Now, since closed sets are just complements of open sets, Basically, any fact that you can say about open sets, there's a parallel statement for closed sets. Okay, so let's give a little example in this next proposition here. So remember, from the axioms of a topology, you know that given an arbitrary collection of open sets, the union is still open. If you're given a finite collection of open sets, then the intersection is still open. Okay, so for closed sets, what happens here? By the way, if you forget which one's the arbitrary one and which one's the finite one, uh, just remember, suppose you look at the epsilon balls about a particular point, x, okay? If you take the intersection of all those epsilon balls, of course, what you get is just the zero ball, which is closed, okay? So you can't take infinite intersections of open sets to get something open. That might not be true, okay? But if you take infinite uh, unions of open sets, it will still be open, and if you take finite uh, intersections of open sets that will be open. Okay, so now it turns out for closed sets you get something similar. Suppose you have a finite union of closed sets, then that will stay closed. And if you have an arbitrary intersection of closed sets, so if you have an arbitrary collection of closed sets and you take the intersection of them, that remains closed. Okay, so the words finite and arbitrary, that will swap around with closed. And you'll see why, okay? So we'll just prove one of these. The other one is very, very similar as you will see from this proof.
Okay, so let's suppose you have a finite uh, number of closed subsets. Okay, z1 up to zn. So what does that mean? That means the complements of these are open, and we want to show that uh, this uh, finite uh, union is going to be closed. So to check that this finite union, z1 union up to zn, is uh, cl closed, you just have to show that its complement is open. So let's look at its complement, and of course you can apply De Morgan's law to see that that's just the intersection of the complements. z1 complement intersect all the way up to zn complement. Now, of course, since these z's are closed, that means that these complements are open. So you've got a finite intersection of open sets. And so from the axioms of the topological space, this is going to be open. And you can see why you, when you apply the complement, of course, you swap from unions to intersections. And that's why the roles of finite and arbitrary swap when you go from open to closed. OK, and of course, you can see how to prove the other statement just by changing unions here to uh, intersections, and you again use De Morgan's law. Okay, so I wanted to talk about a few more basic topological properties, and that's the notion of closure, interior, and boundary, and these are very important as well. Okay, so firstly, let's just uh, draw some pictures which illustrate what the notions are, okay, and hopefully you can get a sense for what it is, and then I'll give you the formal definition over here. Okay, so suppose you have some set like this A here. The first thing I want to show you is a picture of the closure. Okay, so it looks like a closed set like this, which is uh, a bit bigger than this one, and minimally so. Okay, here you have what's called the interior of A. Okay, so we've basically taken just the inside of this shaded region. And the final one here is the boundary of A. Okay, and it looks like what you'd expect it to be the boundary, except some of the boundary is actually inside A and some of it is not inside A, okay? So before we go on, uh, you should have a little think as to why would you expect a notion like this of a boundary to be a topological notion, okay? Do you expect to need uh, the geometry of distances to be able to say what a boundary is? Well, I guess the key point is, remember, topological spaces is really an environment in which you can talk about continuous maps, okay? So if you apply a continuous map to some sort of a space like this, right, you basically, uh, remember, in continuous maps, you can stretch, but you can't break. So basically, you can't break the boundary away from the original set. Okay? You can't tear off the boundary from the original set, which is why you might expect this to be a topological notion. Okay, so let's go to the actual definition of these three things, the closure, the interior, and the boundary. Okay, so suppose you're given some arbitrary subset A of some topological space X. Okay? So what is the closure A bar of A? Okay, so it's represented by this picture. So it's going to be something which contains A. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, all the closed sets which contain A. So all possible closed sets, most likely they're going to be infinite number of them. Okay, so for example, you'll have the complement of the empty set. The empty set is always open, so the complement of the empty set is the whole thing. So you can have a look at that one. But there are lots of other closed sets which contain it. And what you do is you intersect all those closed sets. Okay, that's all it is. You intersect every closed set that contains A, and then you'll get something like this in this example, okay? And that's called the closure A bar of A, the intersection of all closed sets containing A. So, okay, well, what can you say about this closure, okay? So that's the next statement here. It is actually the unique smallest closed set containing A. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, things going on inside this second uh, sentence, so let's pass it. So firstly, it contains A. Why? Because it's an intersection of sets which contain A. All of those sets, closed sets, contain A, and you're accepting all of them, so the intersection will still contain this A. The next thing is it is a closed set. Okay, so why is that? Well, we said that here, that arbitrary intersections of closed sets is still closed. And here we're just intersecting a number of closed sets, maybe infinitely many, but it doesn't matter, it's still going to be closed. Okay, and the other thing is that it's the unique smallest one. So you can't make this closed set any smaller and still contain A. Okay, so why is that? If you could get a smaller closed set containing A, okay, then you, uh, what you do is you intersect with this one here, but remember, A closure is the intersection of all closed sets containing A, okay? So of course, if it's the intersection of all those closed sets, it must be uh, smaller than any of those closed sets containing A, okay? or, or equal to it, okay? 
Okay, so it is in fact the unique smallest one for that reason. Okay, good. So that's a notion of closure. It basically inputs a subset and it returns a closed set. And which one? It's the unique smallest one that contains it. Okay, so what about the interior, the inside? Okay, can we make sense of that? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar sort of thing. Instead of looking at closed sets containing it, what we do is we look at open sets inside. So here's an open set inside like this. Here's another open set inside like this. And what we do is for all these open sets inside this A, we take the union of them. Okay. So when we do that, of course, we won't be able to get points like the ones on the boundary here, okay, which I have yet to define. Okay. You won't get those points. Okay, but you'll get something, okay, and that something is called the interior A0 of A. Okay, so sometimes this has a different notation, maybe A I N T int for interior. So it's just a union of all open subsets of A. Okay, so you look at all the open subsets and take the union. Okay, so what can you say about this? So very much like the notion of a closure, here you're taking an arbitrary union of open sets. So it's still open. So it's an open set. Uh, it's an open subset of A. And what's more, not only is it an open subset of A, it's the unique largest open subset of A. Because you're taking the union of all open subsets of A. So of course, if you take the union of that, and that still happens to be open, uh, and it's also inside A, then it is the unique largest open subset of A. Okay, finally, once you've got these two notions, it's quite easy to define what the boundary is. And I hope you can see from this picture what it should be, okay? So here we have the closure, okay, and here we have the interior. The boundary often denoted like this, partial A like that. Okay, it's basically what you have to add to this to get that. So it's A bar minus the closure of A minus the interior of A. So that's the boundary of A. The closure of A minus the interior of A. That's the definition. And what can you say about this? Well, this is going to be a closed set. And how do you know it's a closed set? Well, one way to write this is since you're removing this interior, that's the same as intersecting with its complement. So here you have A closure, this closed set here, the sm unique smallest closed set containing A. And then you have the complement of the interior. The interior is open, so its complement is closed. So here you intersect a closed set with a closed set, so that's going to be closed. And that gives you another um, topological property of A. So something that you can define just using topological spaces. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to give you lots of examples of topological spaces.